There's something called HS2. You may not know a lot about it, but the, the whole idea is to link um, us uh, with the North, I think. I think. Uh, you know, you've been dead against that from the start, haven't you, Calvin? Well, I, 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 you know, it's not going to work in the sense of all it'll do is bring more people to London. The idea that in some way it opens up the country, I just don't buy. But look, it's going to cost literally billions, billions and billions. And you can be absolutely sure that whatever the number was at the beginning when they first said it, right, that number will be double or treble it. And I, no, I don't mind commercial forces getting involved. Everybody wants to make a few bob. I do understand that. But a lot of that will be coming out of the taxpayer's pocket in the end. And I'm dead against that. You'll be pleased uh, to know, by the way, Kelvin, that HS2 shelled out 1.3 million on redundancy payments last year, presumably because they've stopped bothering to try and actually build it. Well, it sounds like good news. Well, on the line right now, somebody who knows uh, a bit more about HS2 than I do is Liam Halligan. He's a, uh, a journalist and he's presenter on Channel 4 at 8pm on Monday on The Great Train Robbery, which is all about HS2. And I presume from its title, Liam, that there's a sense that uh, a load of money is going down the drain currently. Well, that's what the evidence seems to show, Kelvin, from my investigation of several months. Right. Look, ten years ago, when this scheme was conceived, London to Birmingham, then on to Manchester and Leeds, the government said it would cost £30 billion. Yep. That official estimate's now gone up to £56 billion. The Treasury's whispering £80 billion, And independent experts are talking about more than £100 so, billion. Uh, so, so it's a huge amount of money. And a lot of the experts that I've spoken to People inside government and outside seem to think that this money could be better spent upgrading not the intercity high-speed routes, but the local commuter yeah. routes that millions use daily to get to work and back. Yes, and, uh, and I'm one of them, and it's an absolute nightmare. And if South Western Trains Chief Executive is leading, listening to this, I, I hope that uh, you, try, you, try getting the, uh, you try getting the 802 every morning and see, seeing how far you have to stand up. But Liam, tell me, uh, is this definitely going to go ahead? Uh, sometime, some days I read that it's going to be scrapped, other days I read it's going to go ahead. You know, what's going to happen with it? It's very hard to tell, Kelvin, but I'd say, honestly, as, as a journalist, I'd say it's now in the balance. Right. The only part that's actually got parliamentary assent is the bit from London to Birmingham. And preliminary sort of demolition work has happened already in Euston and levelling work in Birmingham for the new HS2 station. Um, but there's, I, I'm hearing increasingly from industry leaders and yeah. from within government that the part from Birmingham up to Manchester and then to Leeds may not survive because the cost overruns on the first bit are already so Huge. large. And this is reaching a crescendo, really, Kelvin, because we're about to start spending four to six billion quid a year on this thing yep. every year for the next 10 years. Yep. To put that in context, it's big, big, big moolah. <laughs> That's equivalent to what Network Rail spends every year on the rest of the entire national rail network. So the Tories need votes now. HS2 won't deliver for years. Uh, the, the northern section, if it happens, won't happen until the mid-2030s. So senior ministers that I've spoken to are increasingly thinking, shouldn't we scrap this thing? And at a time when passenger dissatisfaction with the rail network as a whole is at a 10-year high, put the money into existing lines instead. Yeah, good idea, good idea. So on, joining us on the debate with Liam is uh, Ian Wormsley. He's columnist from Modern Railways magazine and also Joe Ruckin. I, I hope I got that pronunciation right, it's campaign manager uh, 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 of Stop HS2, so I'm on his side, frankly. Um, Joe, um, w is, is this going to be built? And or is it? Are we just going to get it? Go to Birmingham and forget it? Or what do you think? Uh, well, it, it is Rukin. Sorry about that, but uh, that's it, right. It's, it's fine. not. It's not the easiest surname. No. Uh, well, the chances of HS2 ever lead, reaching Leeds or Manchester are minimal, and that is because, uh, as has been said, the costs are going ballistic. Uh, you know, HS2 are finally finding out what we told them years ago, that the ground conditions are really, really bad. And the route that they have chosen, chosen actually threatens the drinking water 
to London and they're just realising this because they're not tunnelling through chalk like you've got in Kent with the Channel Tunnel, but tunnelling through chalk rubble which could vibrate apart with the speed that they're p- proposing. Ho- ho- hold, on, you... hold on a second, Joe. Hold on a second. Do you mean to say that the Northerners could start poisoning us Southerners with this route? Oh, no, no. It's, it's, oh. It's oh, Southerners doing that to you for months, it's, Calvin, already, by the way. It's your, it's your idiot politicians who are doing this oh. because they you know, just drew a straight line, the quickest... You know, it, it's not just the... It's, you know, you're going through the Cheshire brine fields, which no one with any brains whatsoever would ever build anything in. And up the east of the country, you're going through a literal minefield of subsidence. But the budget will, be, will have been blown on phase one, if phase one even happens. Because, you know, Chris Grayling is desperate to pretend that construction has happened, is starting. What you're seeing is you're seeing, you know, clearing the ground, demolitions, archaeology, not construction. But they are desperate to say it's construction. That's why you have this desperate lobbying exercise from the vested interests uh, that, you know, it's always been about the vested interests. It's always been lobbied for by the people who want to make money out of building it. But you saw this desperate lobbying exercise a couple of weeks ago to try and say, you know, it will be a betrayal to stop phase two because phase two is under serious threat because the money simply isn't there. OK, the OK, hobby- Joe. Yeah, no, I, 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 get, I get the point. 56, 80 billion, whatever it is, is beyond anything. Absolutely mad. But th- there was an argument in favour of it because it was, going, it was supposed to open up the north. And on the line right now, no. Ian Wal- uh, Walmsley, um, as I said, columnist of the Modern Railways magazine. Uh, morning, Ian. Good morning. So is there an argument for going beyond Birmingham or is there an argument and say, look, I tell you what, I'm a commuter, by the way, every day. It's a nightmare. And uh, why do we need to spend money on new rail lines when actually we can't, we can't, get, to, we can't get to work as, on the railways that exist right now? Well, I can't quite follow the logic there that says the existing railway is full, therefore we don't need another one. Right. Um, when, we, when you get down to it, going to Manchester and Leeds is where the main benefit of high-speed rail comes in because obviously Birmingham is closer, mm. so you'll save, you'll save time, but not that much time go to Manchester, you save an hour or more. So, you know, that, that's... Well, actually, I suppose it's two hours on Manchester. Um, but it's... The, Ian, isn't, isn't, isn't the argument... Actually, I, I, I'm being cynical about that. The argument is in reverse, that people from Manchester can get to London a lot quicker, not yeah, the thing it is, opens up the north. Is, there's a lot of confusion. It's seen all about high speed. High speed is a means to an end, and that end is modal transfer from aircraft and from cars. Right. Now, (laughs) your commuter trains are full, and the line is full, and it's got fast trains going down it as well as slow trains. Now then, take the fast trains onto the fast link, you can have a lot more commuter trains, you can move a lot more people more efficiently. Right, yeah, isn't, isn't, isn't the issue, though, Ian, right. isn't the plan. issue, though, Ian, that, that, that we are tasking politicians with seeing this through, and as we know, uh, certainly in the case of Brexit, for example, that is always a bad idea. We're just getting nowhere, aren't we? And a lot of people are currently lumbered with these compulsory purchase orders on new flats that they've bought in the Manchester area, their offices, their warehouses, and they've just got to sit there and wait for years for the government to pull its finger out. Look, I'm not going to stand here and defend the government. The way they do things is not perfect. But unfortunately, I can't do it another way at the moment. Mm. Now, of course, when they built the existing railways and the existing motorway network, we had problems then. And a lot of them went over budget at the time, but now we use them every day, day in, day out. The big question for me is, the Victorians more or less finished the network that we've got over 100 years ago, right? So the population of Britain then was 38 million. There's now 66 million people trying to use essentially the same network. Now, we can see that roads get full. We know that they, we're wasting a lot of energy and creating CO2 by running silly little short flights from London to Manchester. So something needs to be built. Now, you may not like HS2, but to me, it's by far the best option. Um, and when we start talking about we're poisoning the drinking water, you really are starting to get desperate now, aren't you? OK, well, hold on <laughs> once. Uh, hold, hold on, Joe. Joe, I heard you... In fact, you're laughing again there now. I heard you well, laughing I'm, at I'm, I'm Ian's response. Desperate. Why is that? Well, this is the thing. There have been multiple justifications for HS2. And yes, at the start, it was about speed, and then it was a business case, and the, the business case fell apart. 
and he said, oh, it's about modal shift. 1% in. 1% of passengers are forecast to transfer out of air. It is not about modal shift. And then it was this magic one that was going to breach the north-south divide when every single piece of international evidence shows it will drag more stuff to London. Now they're saying it's about regeneration. All, you know, you, you've seen that, say, these desperate lobbying exercises, they are trying to change the narrative to one of it being about regeneration by picking a random number and sticking thousand jobs after it to say how many re- jobs HS2 is going to create. Because you can't argue with job creation, no matter how ridiculously poor value for money it is. But the one that he went for there was capacity. And this idea that HS2 is needed capacity is sold to all these poor souls who are currently in crush hour conditions across the entire network who are being told, oh yes, we could do with new capacity. Absolutely right. Well, HS2 delivers terrible capacity because this idea that if you move a handful of intercity trains off a couple of current lines, it frees up massive capacity is completely erroneous. And of course, the other thing is that for places like Coventry or Doncaster, freeing up capacity means losing the trains you currently have. Uh, There is a requirement in the latest HS2 business case for an £11.1 billion cut to existing services. And if HS2 was wanted for capacity, it would not be high speed. It would be like the rest of the railways. It would be intermodal. It would stop at more places, it would join up with the rest of the network when you say it might as well be high speed. Mm. What you're saying is, well, it might as well not carry freight, it might as well not have intermediate stations, it might as well not connect with the rest of the network, it might as well have the most damage to the environment, to habitats, to communities, and it might as well cost more money for the consultants and the lobbyists who want to build it. uh, Ian... Uh, what, what do you say about that capacity issue, saying that actually they're going to reduce capacity in order to enlarge it, if you see what I mean? Uh, well, it's nonsense, isn't it? The, the handful <laughs> of trains... Uh, I'm trying not to laugh at his bit, to be fair. Yeah, that is um, true. Now, come on, come on, Joe, less laughter. Come on. 18 trains per hour, possibly 14 trains per hour now. No, a handful that you're removing now, from... The that, handful of the capacity that you're that's freeing... That's a handful of trains, is it? And we got to no, know how no, to speak see, at this end or not. Right, right, right. Uh, uh, Joe, 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 let, let, let Ian make his yeah. argument, please. <laughs> Ian? Thank you, right. Um, yeah, obviously, I mean, they're very excited about it in place like Kenilworth because it goes through their town and they're not going to be able to go on it. If you look at the Stop HS2 group, it's all based in towns along the route because they don't want it. And if it went through my garden, I want it either. It, when it comes to the whole country, that it's a desperate need for economic development. And the next question surely is, why does it work in the rest of the world? There are 50,000 kilometres of high-speed line in the world. And he says, oh, it doesn't work on on modal transfer. Paris-Strasbourg, 80% of the airline passengers transferred to rail. Brussels-London, just under 60% of the airline passengers transferred to rail. And a lot of car drivers do, but it's much more difficult to manage. And there is no question that if you take a fast train off a main line, you make room for a couple more slow trains. We could have a great deal more commuting capacity into London. So... It is about capacity. Well, you don't get that capacity without the high-speed factor because people won't transfer to it. That, if that's you put a tr- slow train on, then clearly you're not competing with the airline. That, that is true. I do buy that. So what, what are they going to say that the time from London to Manchester n- becomes under HS2? Uh, London to Manchester currently is two hours, eight minutes. With HS2, it goes to one hour, eight minutes. So it's a straight right. hour. So that, if you're that, a businessman, you've tri- saved two hours yeah, on your day. I, I, I tell you what, that would be that would be enough to... To, to influence me. Joe, what do you say to that argument? I love the idea of being able to get to Manchester, or e- I'm a do Manchester you? businessman. Because you say some unspeakable things about Manchester normally. Off yes, there. but I'm looking at it from the other direction, the, the speed I can get out of Manchester right. to London. They're actually thinking of doing uh, a catapult from Doncaster straight into <laughs> space, actually. But anyway, sorry. <laughs> right, well, sorry. hold on. Let, jo- on. let Joe, don't start joining in on the jo- hostile hosta- to me, otherwise what? I'm going to be forced to cut your mic and fire you. <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> Joe... <laughs> Um, See, this is, this is the thing when you hear the arguments for HS2. A lot of things are said that sound like they must be true and must be a good idea. But 
the, the thing is with Manchester that rail almost completely dominate, well, does completely dominate the transport market anyway. Like hardly anyone flies from London to Manchester as it is. And this is the thing. When I said 1% modal shift, I didn't make that figure up. That's the official figure from HS2 Limited. They started off saying 8%, they cut it to 4%, they cut it to 3%, it's now 1% modal shift. Like the, 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 what you will find is that a lot yeah. of passengers are oh. apparently going to transfer from the existing railways, which, if uh, electricity is being generated the same way, will be less polluting and you are having these parkway stations which will mean you have to drive to them which will have more pollution in as well and there's so many of these arguments joe joe i've i'm very 18 trains an hour joe joe i've got to stop you we 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 have advertising but thank you very much indeed joe rukin (laughs) ian walmsley thank you very much indeed everybody's laughing i don't know why it's nearly 80 billion quid